They don't pay us to think. They pay us to know. We know we can beat them. There's no excuses why we shouldn't. Win the game. Period. W is on three, man. Talk to me. Let's go. W on three. One, two, three. W. w. Welcome, all my fellow Redskin brethren and sistren. I am your man and resident Redskins fan, Lou. Thank you for joining me here on the Redskins Report, a special edition of the Redskins Report, as we'll be doing a draft prospects 101 breakdown on the newest Redskin, a surprise to myself and probably most Redskin fans out there everywhere as the Redskins dip their toe into the supplemental draft making a selection in the sixth round of Virginia Tech cornerback Adonis Alexander. And so here we are breaking him down on this program tonight. What I'd first want to do is make sure that I get through to all of you out there that don't look at this as some special player that the Redskins went out and got in a supplemental draft. Look at it for what it is. They spent a sixth round pick and all that means by making a selection in the supplemental draft is that you have to then forfeit that exact same pick in the upcoming draft. So because the Redskins spent a six round selection in the uh, 2018 supplemental draft, that, that six round pick is then forfeited in the 2019 NFL draft. Well, good for us. We had three six round picks in next year's draft. So now we have two. Whoopee. Okay, no really foul done here by throwing out a flyer. And that's exactly what this is, is a flyer. So I want you guys to understand, it's not like we went out and got Sam Beal in this draft who was taken by the Giants in the third round of the supplemental draft. That you could have gotten excited about. And I'm not telling you to, to not be excited about Adonis Alexander. I'm just telling you, temper your expectations. He's a supplemental draft pick in the sixth round. And most of these guys come with red flags. And that is the case here. And we'll talk about that. But I just want you guys to go into this process thinking about him as a six-round pick because that's exactly what he is. He could not make the roster, okay? He could be a guy that could be stashed on the practice squad and they work with him and maybe down the road he's a, a help to this roster or he may not be a help at all. If you guys remember back in 2010 when we got, uh, I think his name, what was his name? Jarman something um, from Kentucky, the defensive end, edge rusher, that turned out to be a bum. We traded him to Denver. He was out of the league in like three years. Remember him? So don't get carried away with these supplemental draft picks, okay? All right? But in any event, if you're a first-time viewer, welcome to the program. Subscribe to the Louis T. Network for more great content for all the teams in the league, including the Washington Redskins, especially the Washington Redskins. And if you look up right there, Next to me, I've got the uh, picks scrolling across the screen that the Redskins made in the 2018 NFL Draft. I've broken down every single one of those players. And so if you haven't had a chance to watch that video, the draft wrap-up video for the Re Watch the Redskins is done. It's up on the site. It's also on the Louis T. Network on YouTube. Check that video out. All you have to do is go to the Redskins playlist, and you will find that video. And so uh, there's also a Talking Redskins blog. If you look down below, you'll see that Redskins uh, emblem there, Talking Skins, on my website, louisttnetwork.net. Uh, there is a Redskins blog that you can start a thread, and, it, and we can have ongoing dialogue about the Redskins, uh, and, and you can make a post. I tend to make posts up there periodically to try to see what the temperature is of the fan base. I'd love for you guys to participate in that, so uh, check that out if you get a chance. But uh, we are here to talk about Adonis Alexander and what this guy could potentially bring to the table for the Washington Redskins as they spent a six-round pick in the supplemental draft to acquire him. So let's talk about what Adonis Alexander brings to the table and why the Redskins saw fit to spend a sixth-round selection uh, in the supplemental draft on Virginia Tech cornerback Adonis Alexander. So when this pick was made, the first thing that came to my mind, the first thing that I thought of, this smells and reeks of Torian Gray. And I love it, okay? Torian Gray, for those of you who aren't familiar, is the Redskins defensive backs coach, secondary coach, call him what you want. But he's in control of the secondary and coaching these guys up. And since he's come on board, the secondary has, has gotten better exponentially it, it can't be measured just how much better guys like Quentin Dunbar 
are, or a guy that we've watched grow like DeShazer Everett. Guys have gotten better under the leadership of Torian Gray. That was a secondary that was divided, a locker room um, and a group that was divided uh, before Torian Gray came on board and took over as the secondary and defensive backs coach. And he's been outstanding. Everything he's touched as Redskins defensive backs coach has turned to goal. I have nothing but the utmost confidence in his ability to coach up whomever steps foot in the Redskins facility as a defensive back. So I feel good from that standpoint about Adonis Alexander being a selection by the Redskins because Torian Gray knows firsthand what Adonis Alexander is all about. That first year on that Vatek campus, Torian Gray was his coach and was able to see what this guy was able to bring to the table. Similar to Greg Stroman, another guy that Torian Gray had contact with that was able to see. And so you, you've got to know that they went to Torian Gray and asked him about Adonis Alexander's character on and off the field and what this guy brought to the table and would he be a good fit in the Redskins locker room. Obviously, they got the green light from Torian Gray. Here we are talking about a six-round selection in the supplemental draft. Uh, with Adonis Alexander. That being said, let's jump into Adonis Alexander. And before we even get to his um, abilities on the field, we got to talk about this guy off the field because, again, generally, when you get a guy in the supplemental draft, there are some character issues and some red flags. It's just a part of the business. It's a part of the, uh, the risk that you take with a guy that you draft in the supplemental draft. It's just how it goes. And that name was Jeremy Jarman. If you remember from about 2010, the Redskins spent... I want to say it was a third round uh, supplemental draft pick. Uh, edge rusher out of Kentucky didn't work. So don't get overly excited about this. But nonetheless, um, here's a guy that was academically ineligible for the upcoming season. And so because of that fact, he wasn't going to be able to play his redshirt senior year at Virginia Tech. And so he said, you know what? I I'm just going to enter into the supplemental draft and see what happens because I can't play anyway. It's not going to hurt me. So um, he wasn't able to play. And so, luckily enough for him, he got drafted by the Redskins, and he's going to get a chance to um, see his dreams come to fruition and try to make this Redskins roster. Uh, he was arrested on uh, weed charges in 2016, and he was suspended, subsequently suspended for the first game of that season uh, by Virginia Tech. And so, just know that there is a little bit of history there. Uh, he has since been drug tested quite a bit, and uh, to everyone's knowledge, and, and really we're getting this from him, so... We don't know how true it is. Uh, he hasn't failed a, tra a drug test since that uh, period. But whatever the case may be, just know that that's something that does exist. Then he was suspended two games in 2017 by, by Virginia Tech for, quote, unquote, not living up to Virginia Tech standards. Whatever that means, he wasn't abiding by team rules. They were very disappointed in his actions. And so they sat his ass down for a couple of games uh, in 2017 and so um, this is a guy with a little bit of a checkered pass. Uh, and look, I've always said, I don't have a problem with guys with these kinds of issues. I don't have a problem with a guy with a little bit of a weed issue or a guy with a little bit of a rough around the edges issue. I as long as you can get these kind of guys to assimilate into the locker room, these guys will be just fine. You can't have a bunch of Boy Scouts. I've said that enough times already. You don't want guys getting in trouble off the field. You don't want guys picking up 15-yard penalties on the field. But you do want guys that are a little rowdy. You want guys that are a little rough and tough and rugged. He's one of those guys. So I don't have a problem with that. Uh, in any event, here are some of his numbers, and we'll talk about this guy and what he brings to the table. So career interceptions, seven. So that tells you right there, ball skills. 2015, in his freshman year on the Virginia Tech cam uh, campus, uh, four interceptions. So you're looking at a guy that jumped onto the scene, and that was his best year in terms of uh, interceptions, best year in terms of production with four in that season. He had one in 2017, two in 2016, so he's got ball skills. 17 uh, PBUs, so he's getting his hands on the football, uh, very aware of where the ball is, that's a good thing. And one forced fumble to his credit as well. We'll come back to that 2015 season at the end of this breakdown because I think that's going to be probably his best fit at the next level. But nonetheless, 6'2", buck 95 stands Adonis Alexander. You're looking at a guy that um, that's extreme length in this league. You, you love that size. You love that length. You love that height. 
right there, he has an advantage over probably 75% of the corners in the league because 6'2 is huge. That comes with long wingspan, and it gives you a chance, even when you get um, a guy that has a step or two on you, that kind of size. And you saw it in a play that he made against Miami where he was beaten, but because he's 6'2", can jump, has a little bit of athleticism and length, he was able to go up and take the football and pick it off. So um, it's those types of plays that are allowed to be made because of his measurables. So uh, that's the first pro with him is his, um, his measurables. His length gives him a chance in this league. Uh, why does his limp give him a chance? Because his speed isn't up to par necessarily with what you're looking for in today's NFL cornerback. He ran a 4-6. Now, you can get away with 4-6 when you're 6-2, all right? He's a bigger guy, and he, he's probably in that 4-5, five, 5 five to 4-6 range, but in any event, um, that's what you usually get with bigger corners. When you find the holy grail with a height, weight, speed specimen at the cornerback position like a Jalen Ramsey, that's when you hit the jackpot. But it's rare to find that guy that's 6'2", that still runs a sub 4'5", and has the length that comes with, with the 6'2 frame. You're not getting that with Adonis Alexander. He's more like Carlton Davis, who was drafted by the Tampa Bay Buccaneers, a long rangey 6'1", 6'2", corner that's not going to run as fast, but it is better getting in the face of a receiver. So speed, not his biggest attribute, but he makes up with it with length. Athleticism, he's a solid athlete. I put down in my notes with leaping ability to match his height. Um, you look at some plays that he made. Uh, I watched him in a number of games in 2016 and 2017 to get a good feel for what this guy brings to the table. Um, I watched him in, against Miami in 2017. I watched him versus West Virginia in 2017. Um, made some really good plays in both of those games going up and getting the football at its highest point. Also had a knockaway in that West Virginia game where he had to climb the ladder to knock the football away. So you see some of that athleticism on display where he has to leave his feet and use some of that vert to get up there and get to the football. Acceleration is not one of his biggest strong suits. Again, 4'6 flat um, in terms of a 40. So acceleration, not the greatest. He does have long strides. He does eat up a lot of grass that way. But he's a guy that has to build up speed. And so sometimes... That's to his detriment. We'll talk about that a little bit later on. Uh, anticipation and awareness. To me, he doesn't anticipate enough for my liking. He does have the ability to do so. I'll give you an example. Uh, he's in zone coverage versus Boston College. Uh, and he's supposed to carry, he's in cover three. He's supposed to carry the deepest. So he's got that deep third. And he's supposed to run with the clear out. So the guy that is in front of him, the receiver in front of him, is running a clear route route. All he's doing is running a nine route, a go route. He's running straight up the field, and the receiver in the slot is running an out. Adonis Alexander should not be in this play because he should be running with that receiver and keeping uh, the deepest third on his side of the field. Instead, he eyeballs the quarterback, sees that he wants to go to the out, and Adonis Alexander peels off of his receiver and his responsibility and lights up the out route in complete pass. That's good awareness and anticipation seeing what's happening. He didn't do that enough, though. Okay, he allows a lot of easy completions underneath. We'll talk about that a little bit later on as to why that is uh, possible with him. But I think he is capable of being a little bit more aware than he's, he's shown um, in the past. And, and again, that's where Torian Gray comes in to um, the fold. So you move on to his next pro. Look, locate, and contest. To me, that is a requisite. That is a prerequisite for any cornerback coming into the National Football League. If you don't look for the football, you are going to struggle. He does look for the football, but here's the caveat with that. Put down in my notes, looks when comfortable, face guards when not. So what I'm essentially saying is when he's comfortable, when he is where he feels like he needs to be to make a play on the football, i.e. in the hip pocket of the receiver, step for step, in phase with that receiver, knows where the receiver is in conjunction to where the football is, he feels really good about turning his head and then looking and locating the football. When he isn't comfortable with where the receiver is, doesn't exactly know how close the football is to coming, but knows the receiver has him beat, he won't even bother to look back. He'll face guard, and sometimes he'll have enough time to look back, but he'll panic, face guard, and pick up penalties. I've got examples of both instances when he's comfortable and he looks, he, you get the interception versus West Virginia where he essentially runs the route for the receiver and makes the play. Or you get the interception versus Miami where he's able to locate the football despite 
the receiver having a step on him, he's comfortable enough in looking back and locating and leaping up and making an extraordinary interception on the football. When he's not comfortable in that same Miami game, two pass interference penalties where he just runs slam into the receiver, doesn't look back for the ball, and in one instance, ball damn near hit him in his back. If he turns around, he might pick it off, but because he didn't look, he picked up a couple of pass interference penalties. So he's a, a guy that is, when he's comfortable, he'll look for the football. When he's not, he's a guy that's probably going to pick up some pass interference penalties. Ball skills. I told you seven career INTs. The guy can make plays on the football, uses his athleticism and length to pluck it out of the air. So ball skills aren't a question for me. Uh, tackling and his willingness to tackle. He's an inconsistent tackler. One of those guys that likes to throw his shoulder around, doesn't necessarily wrap up as much as I would like him to. Um, he's not afraid to go in and mix it up. He's just not always adept at doing so. He's a guy that will miss some tackles, a guy that will come in recklessly, throw a shoulder, but won't knock a guy down. So um, I don't necessarily trust him as a tackler all the time, but he is capable of making tackles. Man coverage ability, I like him in man when he comes up and gets close on the receiver. The problem with that is, however, he doesn't have the long distance speed to carry. So what usually happens in those situations is if he doesn't get off uh, that line of scrimmage with a clean uh, turnaround and transition from his back pedal, uh, you're going to find that guys get open very quickly. We'll talk about that here in a second when we get to his cons. So I like him in zone coverage actually better than I do man. Here's the the kicker with him being in zone, though. I like him in press and bail technique. I don't want him putting his hands on the receiver um, unless he's going to win doing that. I don't mind him when he puts his hand on the receiver and he's able to redirect them and gets off a good jam. I love it. One more of it. Problem is there are too many times where either he's not looking to do that or he doesn't get a clean jam off and he doesn't have the ability to miss on a jam and get back into the play. He's just not wired that way. His athleticism and his ability to get back into play, it just won't allow him to do so. So I like him to come up, get in, get in the face, delete the airspace uh, of a receiver, but don't touch him. Just bail at the snap, knowing that I'm going to keep everything in front of me, and if this guy wants to, to just open up and run, I can turn my hips and go much faster than slow. So I don't want him square to the receiver at, at the snap. I want him already turning and bailing on that snap, and if something were to happen, plant and then drive. But if this guy wants to take it deep because he's not as fast, I can just open up and run and be with him step for step, which I've seen him do on tape, and I like him in those situations. So I would prefer him to be in press and bail and not actually put his hands on guys uh, because when he is in uh, man coverage, I like him in press and bail in a cover three setting, keeping everything in front of him and not giving up anything deep because he is, he is a, a liability if a guy has speed and is able to beat him off the line of scrimmage. Blitzing capabilities. I like him as a blitzer. I think he's very deceptive. I think he hides it until the very last moment of the snap, and he times it up well, and I saw him uh, almost get to the quarterback a number of times. Coming Again, when you're coming all the way from the outer hash as a corner and you almost hit home, you've timed it up well, and you're eating up ground at a very rapid rate, which he does both because of his long strides and because he knows how to time it up. And so I like him as a blitzer. And I think that's something that the Redskins can tap into if they so choose, um, if this guy does, in fact, make this roster somehow, some way. Versatility isn't one of his strong suits. Um, if, if he makes this team, it'll be off of two things, special teams and it'll be off of, and I wasn't that impressed with what I saw from him on special teams. I'm not going to lie to you. As a gunner, I didn't think he, he blocked very well at all, but um, he may be a guy that can get down there and make tackles. I didn't see much of that from him, so... Um, and he's going to have to play out wide as a boundary corner. He can't play in the slot. He's not quick enough. So um, there's not a lot of versatility that you're getting with Adonis Alexander. That being said, from all those good things, though, um, there are some negatives. So let's get to some of those now. And, and really, there's one. One big one that I think is going to be the undoing of him in his career. And that's agility and change of direction. To me, and this is what I put in my notes, he struggles in transition with extremely high backpedal, which causes him to lose balance 
or a step or two at the line of scrimmage. So what that means is the reason they do those drills at the combine with guys in their back pedal, they want them low and they want them to turn and get out and they don't want them to waste any motion. You don't want them taking a false step, especially when you can't afford it. And Adonis Alexander can't afford a false step. The first tape that I put on was a game in 2016 versus Virginia. And I watched him turn out of his uh, back pedal, transition, and, and slip and fall and should have given up a big play, but the quarterback overthrew the receiver. Um, he struggles coming out of his back pedal because he's so long and he doesn't get down low enough. He doesn't sink his hips. So he's so high that his transition is really sloppy. It's really choppy and muddled. And it allows guys to be able to make quick moves and him not be able to react to it. So for instance, this guy gets murdered on slants. I've watched slant after slant after slant be completed in his face um, because he just can't transition out of his back pedal, plant and drive cleanly enough to make a play to stop a guy. You turn on the West Virginia game from 2017. They were purposely going at Adonis Alexander on third and manageable situations with the same route over and over again. Stills was killing him on the slant. And there was nothing Adonis Alexander could do about it because he didn't want to open up and overcommit. And then they go slant and go, and they run the sluggo, and he gets beat. So he wanted to make sure they weren't trying to beat him deep, but he couldn't react fast enough to the slant because he can't turn his hips, plant and drive, and go make a play on the football. He does not have click and close ability to go make plays on uh, moves that are quick to the inside. And I'll, I'll take it a step further. When guys are looking to run by him on the, on the go ball, and he's in press. He struggles out of that transition from uh, backpedal to full-out sprint. And guys can get on top of him, and if they have any kind of speed, they can win, and there's nothing Adonis Alexander can do about it. So um, there, I have issues with him and his transition, his agility, change of direction. That is his fatal flaw, if you ask me. That's the one thing that's going to stop this guy from potentially being a lead at the next level. If he's able to clean that up, He's got a shot not only to make this roster, but to have an impact. This is what I see for Adonis Alexander. His best season at Virginia Tech, his most productive season, was in 2015 when he was a rover. What is a rover? A rover is a hybrid combination of safety and linebacker, a guy that kind of roams around the field. If you remember Kaishan Jarrett, who we drafted in 2015, he was a rover of sorts at Virginia Tech. And when he was his most productive at Virginia Tech, he was a guy that drifted around the field and made plays that hybrid safety linebacker position. That's what Adonis Alexander, I think, could be at the next level. I don't know if the Redskins necessarily see this guy as a starter at the cornerback position, at least not right now. I think there are other candidates that are much better suited for a boundary corner for the Redskins for the next five years or so, for the foreseeable future at least. I can run all three in Norman, um, Dunny, and Fab Moreau. So I just don't see him overtaking any of those guys. I'd run with Greg Stroman before I would Adonis Alexander as we speak right now, and both of those guys were selected in the sixth round. That being said, Adonis Alexander's length and his ability to make plays on the football, there's a place in the league for him. There's a place on the field for him. The question is, is it corner or is it safety? That's the question. What do they see him as? I think they're going to give him a run at corner first to see what this guy brings to the table. If they like what, they're, what they see, he's going to stay at corner. If they don't, they may try to move him around. And if they can't figure out a place for him, he's not going to make this team. That's what I see from Adonis Alexander. What do you guys see? What do you guys think about the newest acquisition in the sixth round of the supplemental draft? Adonis Alexander out of Virginia Tech. Love to hear from you in the comment section. Love to hear from you on the site, louisttnetwork.net on the Talking Skins blog. Love to hear from you. Like the video, share it, subscribe to the channel if you haven't already done so. More Redskin content coming as training camp is right around the corner. You know I'm going to hold you down. I'm a Redskin etched, a Redskins fan etched in burgundy and gold. My Redskin spirit will never die. Redskin spirit will never fold until we meet again. Hail to our beloved Washington Redskins. I will see you guys next time. Have a good one. Newest Redskin Adonis Alexander, what do you think? I'll see you guys next time. Louis T. Network.